And our buddy Neil McCready, Rebel Grove, part of Rivals.com with us now on the Johnston RV Center.com hotline. And when Neil popped up on our preview screen, uh, Dunaway immediately said, what a cool hat. Yeah, I like the, the black vintage Hawks looking hat. hats. Yes. Man. That's a good one. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it is a good hat. Um, I don't know whether to start. I wanted a little bit more love than that, but you know, yes. I know our relationship. What's our relationship? Uh, very much thought, me complimenting thought, you and you very giving me two oh. words back. <laughs> no, well, okay, I'll, I'll give more. Um, I'm, I can tell you a really funny Blackhawk story if you want one. Sure. Uh, my son and I, years ago, when he was still a little guy, we were at a um, NHL, I guess it was with the semi Western Conference semifinals. It was Blackhawks, Blues. It was in St. Louis. We were in St. Louis. My daughter had a dance competition. And um, someone gave us tickets to a, a – it was game five, I think, of the series. And it was great. It was an overtime game. We got there early. And um, I bought my son a Blues hat, a little Blues jersey. And uh, we go and we start out cheering for the Blues. And uh, I'm a big Cubs fan, as you know. And uh, Carson got a little Chicago influence as the game went on. And suddenly his loyalty shifted from the Blues to the Blackhawks. And uh, the Blackhawks win the game in overtime. And we're leaving the arena to go back to our hotel. And he says, Dad, I'm really glad we won that game. And this guy turns around and looks at us. And he's decked out in his Blues gear. And he goes to his girlfriend or wife or fiance, whatever she was. He says, um, damn, I wish I thought we won that game. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> hey, so this Ole Miss team, um, they're good. I mean, how good are they, though? I mean, do we know yet? No, we don't. Um, they have – and Ole Miss people get mad at me when I say this, and I understand why. I mean, look, they've, they've, they've handled eight of the nine assignments put in front of them. Um, yet, who have they really played? I mean, they, they played Kentucky. They won. It was close. Kentucky was a beat away from winning. Um, they played Auburn. I don't have to tell you guys about Auburn. Um, they went down to LSU, got off to a hot start. Then got beat 42 to three in the final three quarters. They went to Texas A&M. They won, but Texas A&M is not good. So here we are. They're eight and one. I don't know that they've beaten anybody that's particularly good outside of Kentucky, who's solid. And yet, they've done what they've been asked to do. It's not they've played the schedule that was put in front of them. So I, to answer your question, it's, I don't know how good they are. I, they, they they play with confidence. I think they're a really good offensive team, especially running the football. Uh, defensively, they've given up a lot of yards and a lot of points here the last four games or so. So it's uh, it's debatable how good they are. Um, do we know how good Alabama is? <laughs> Same question. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's interesting about Alabama, and, and Ryan and I have talked about this some. When you look at Alabama on the road for the last year and a half or so, this is a trend. I mean, they, they, they flirted with this out. Astor in Austin, they kind of toyed with it in Fayetteville, and then you know they they lost it in Knoxville, which was a brutal, tough, brutally difficult place to play. And Tennessee's good, and they lost at Tiger Stadium. And I'd seen LSU two weeks earlier, and um, LSU's good. They're not great. They're good, and that's a difficult place to play. And they have a great environment and all of that stuff. And Brian Kelly's teams typically get better as the season goes on, and he's done a really good job. But the fact that Alabama went down to LSU and lost. It kind of made me question, well, just how good is this Alabama team? Just how checked in is this Alabama team? Is is something off about them? Because, look, LSU's fine. Jaden Daniels is a nice quarterback. He does a lot of good things. They're well coached. But when we've done this for a long time, Jim, right? I mean, you, you watch – you've seen a lot of really good LSU teams. Mm -hmm. And this is not one of those teams. This is a good team. It's a good team. They're good. There's nothing wrong with them. They're athletic. They've got some guys that look the part. Uh, the young freshman tackle, Campbell's a nice player. Um, Kayshawn Butte is is someone you have to prepare for. You have to know where he is. The running back, Williams, is solid. Um, you know, they, they're, they're, the Perkins kid on defense is a stud. Man. He's a he's stud, a, yes. He's special. And they've got some other good players around him, but but I've, I've seen a bunch of LSU teams more, more talented than this one. Neil McCready is with us, at Neil McCready on Twitter is where you uh, go to follow him and uh, watch his videos, read his stuff. 
Um, there as part of Rivals.com and Rebel Grove. He is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. A reminder as we, uh, as we talk to Neil that our friends at Alabama Power want you to uh, pay with convenient, easy options. Amazon Pay, Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, Venmo. Easy, secure, and reliable. All you need is an online account. You can get that at AlabamaPower.com slash my account. Uh, we, we love in the media doing things like this. Um, but with all things considered, could you make an argument? It is like, I'm going to laugh as I'm saying it. Lane Kiffin's biggest game as a head coach. Do I need to explain that, Neil? Do I need to explain <laughs> my stance on this? Um, yeah, you can argue okay, that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let me, let, let me just, for, for purposes of the question, I mean, look, Lane's in a good position. Auburn wants him. I don't know if Lane wants Auburn or not, but Lane certainly is going to make Ole Miss thinks he wants Auburn or Jimmy Sexton will, right? Sure. Um, look, Auburn wants him. And, yeah. you know, Lane wants to get paid, and I think Ole Miss will pay Lane as much as it can possibly pay him and extend him out as long as it possibly can extend him out. Is that what Lane wants? I don't know. Like, I wrote this the other day. I don't, you know, there's a lot of unknowns here, and Lane Kiffin's not exactly sitting down with Oprah and doing a tell all. Um, it's such a bad fit, Lane Kiffin and Auburn. It is an exceptionally terrible fit. And so I, it, it's what's mind boggling to me that. That's the direction that that Auburn seems dead set on trying to go. And I have to think that Lane and the people around Lane know that it's a bad fit. You know, you watch what Auburn's done in the last week, and I don't mean this as an insult, but they they fired Brian Harson, They promoted Cadillac Williams to inter, interim coach, as you guys know. And if you look at their social media, it's all about family and Auburn and all that stuff. Lane is never going to give you all of that. He's never going to do all that. He's not going to do all the War Eagle stuff and talk about the Auburn family and traditions. And Nope. Lane's about Lane. Lane, The, the brand that Lane brings is Lane. But, uh, but I just don't yeah. know. I just don't know that Auburn likes that. Now, he wins, and he's a hell of a good football coach, and maybe that overcomes all of that. But from a fit standpoint, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, as opposed to Hugh Freeze, who I covered for six seasons, who makes all the sense in the world there because he would do all of that stuff. And anyway, we can come back to that real quick, though, but I wanted to follow up, Lance, because and Lance... By the way, I agree with you 100%. Well, and I thought you might want to ask him about yeah. Hugh Freeze, but 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 because I know that's your pick, LT. But Lance, is, Lance made the point earlier, I mean, he thinks Arkansas beats LSU. And, and you could have a scenario where this game kicks at 2.30 nil, and all of a sudden, if Ole Miss wins this thing, they're in the West driver's seat because LSU has just lost at Arkansas. Yeah, I mean, everyone's watching that game. I, I wish I knew what everyone saw on that because I would go put some money on it. That line came out. I'm like, what? I mean, it, I know it's a trap line. I, I want to lay LSU in three all day long. I, I watched Arkansas last week against Liberty, and they were they were abysmal. Like something's something's culturally wrong in that inside that game, especially on the offensive side of the football. They were Arkansas did not give up a point in the second half and still lost. That was that was bizarre. But regardless, yeah, look, if you announce before the game, hey, Arkansas 31, LSU 28 or whatever, yeah, the, the, the game changes. It all of a sudden is a national playoff game for Ole Miss because if they win at that point, they all they got to do is go to Arkansas and win and beat Mississippi State at home, and then they get a shot at the SEC championship game for the first time in the program's history. And look, we're doing a lot of ifs here, but in that scenario, you're one win away from going to the college football playoff. I mean, it would be a hell of a difficult win to get, but regardless. So yeah, it's, it's, it's potentially a huge day for Ole Miss. On the flip side, if LSU wins, both teams have to kind of look at inside and go, okay, well, what are we playing for here? Because now you're counting on Texas A&M to beat LSU for in Ole Miss's sake. And in Alabama's sake, they would be officially eliminated and I don't, I don't know that anybody looks at A and M and goes, "Oh yeah, that's the team that's going to answer the bell, uh, the, the final weekend of the season and beat LSU." Uh, Neil, before the season, I said Hugh Freeze. I mean, we all knew it was inevitable that Brian Harson was going to get fired, and I said Hugh Freeze is the guy, it needs to be the guy. And John mm -hmm. Cohen, the new AD, comes out yesterday and says, "I've got 58 different points that we're looking at. The three main are culture, uh, cultural fit, um, X's and O's, and recruiting." Hugh Freeze he checks every box there for Auburn, does he not? Every single one of them. Look, I, I don't mean this as a criticism. We did the college visit. My daughter and I went over there. I covered Auburn for six years. We took the visit, and everything is War Eagle, War Eagle, War Eagle, everywhere you go. It's, this, it's, it's the whole thing. Lane's not doing any of that 
Hugh will do all of that. Lane is not going to do – look, they lit the Christmas tree in Oxford uh, last night. Lane did it a year ago, bitched about it. Did not do it this year. Who bitches about <laughs> lighting a Christmas tree? Lane doesn't like stuff like that. Hugh Freeze will go light all the Christmas trees. <laughs> Hugh, Freeze, Hugh Freeze will go to every one of those meetings. What are they, Tiger Club or whatever, whatever they're called. I'm, I'm not trying to be condescending. I just don't know the name. He's going to go to all of them. He'll do all of that stuff. He'll take a million pictures. He'll kiss the babies. He's a politician. And Auburn likes politicians. They have always have. They like that guy that's out among them. He's going to let the boosters in. Uh, uh, freezes. Kiffin's not. Kiffin's, it's locked down. Kiffin is the, Kiffin it followed the Nick Saban program building model. He's, even though he worked for Pete Carroll and for six seasons, he's much more Saban than he is Carroll in terms of the way he runs his, his organization. It's very tight. Auburn's not going to like that. He's not going to do a bunch. He's not going to do local media. Hugh Freeze will do all the local media. It's one fits, one doesn't. And Hugh comes at about, what, half the price? Because if you tell me today that Lane Kiffin is the next coach at Auburn and you say guess the contract, I'm going to guess eight to ten years, at least $10 million a year, probably pushing $100 million, and I'm going to bet that every bit of it's guaranteed. Yep. It'll be very Jimbo Fisher-like. And, you know, and look, Lane's a terrific coach, and he's a better coach than Jimbo. But if I'm right, and if Lance is right, and it's not a great fit, well, now you're kind of stuck with him because you can't afford a $100 million buyout at Auburn. Hell, Texas A&M can't afford a $90 million buyout, and they've got more money than Auburn. Seems a little early for a city Christmas tree to me. I don't know. I don't live in Oxford. That seems a bit early and, now. You know, I can't, I can't criticize. I would have in the past, but I spent last weekend, it was Ole Miss's open date, I spent last weekend putting up Christmas stuff. I was in the attic okay. Friday night, Saturday morning. I can't yeah. criticize it. You know what? It made my wife happy. It was worth it. Um, she's pleased, has the tree up. It's all decorated. I would have never guessed that I would do that on November the 6th, but I did. And you know what? Whatever. Damn, you're getting old, man. Yeah, you're getting soft. Yeah. <laughs> you, used to be one of the, you used to be one of the hardest guys I knew, man. You used to be, <laughs> you used to be prison hard. <laughs> I know. I know. Not anymore. I'm, I'm pretty soft. I'm... Yeah. When you're a blues fan. We're getting old. Yeah. Rockstar's right. When you're a blues fan, you're much harder. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, all right. He is Neil McCready. Well, yeah, hey, I was uh -huh. the guy sitting at that game quietly cheering for the Blackhawks. I was like, come on, let's do this. But I was keeping my mouth closed because yeah. we were around him. So that was rowdy. And then he started cheering. I was like, dude, stop. Chill out. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Uh, do uh, do several things here. Go follow Neil uh, on Twitter at Neil McCready. Uh, support his video stuff and all this stuff there. Rivals and Rebel Grove, and uh, it's always uh, always good catching up with you, Neil. Thank you for the time, man. Always enjoy being with you guys. Have a great day. Pris everybody, you too. Prison Take hard, man. Prison hard. Yeah. It's like prison Mike on the office. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, Neil was on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline.